Hello guys, this is Dorothy at Done by Dorothy, and we are here today. We're going to be doing a little DIY, um, sort of like you did what? Because it was like crazy, um, and it's one of those things that, I don't know, maybe you've thought about, I don't know, um, but it's one of those things that I just thought about and was like, well, I'm going to make that happen. Let's see how this works. Um, so we're going to be working with napkin skins, um, which is going to sound really crazy, and I will show you the process, but basically this is, was a napkin and it is now a napkin skin. You can hear it. It's almost like a paper. Um, it would remind you of almost like a glassine or a vellum, a really thin flexible vellum basically. Um, but if I can pull this up here, because so you can see, so you can see my music page and yes, you can see the music behind it so you can use it to re-glue to projects you can make projects out of it um you can i mean i'm going to be doing this will probably be uh three different videos uh because i have several different things i'm making out of them so like the process will be today uh tomorrow will be we'll construct some of the items we're going to make um and then thursday i'll be doing making some other things so um, you got a couple of different things we're going to be doing out of it. Uh, so you can use it multiple ways. I love using any kind of thing and journaling that I can maximize. You know, if it's something you can spread across several different items, you know, I love doing that. So this is what we're going to be working on. So like I said, today we're going to be doing process. The process is super simple. Um, and the one thing I love about this, and I'll sort of explain it because We've all used napkins. Um, we've all adhered napkins, mod podge, however you want to. Um, onto journaling cards, the front of our journals, journaling pages, envelopes, bags, pockets, tucks. We've used them on everything. And if anybody knows, one of the most aggravating things about it is, you know, once you mod podge it on there is you either have to sit and dry it with a gun and it takes a really long time and it's hot and then you've got to be really careful because if you get too close it bubbles and it sticks and or you mod podge and you let it set overnight and then you're stuck you're sort of in this wibbly wobbly spot of waiting for your stuff to dry so you can work with it this allows you um to basically have your napkin ready and you can do a whole napkin at a time. So if you need just a little piece, you know, you, then you have all this, you have all your napkin left over you can use. So you can literally tear out what parts you need um, and add it to whatever project you want. And it's done ahead of time. And, you know, it takes, you know, take an hour, you know, once a month and do, you know, 10, 15 napkins, have them done. When it gets done, you can, I mean, they, it folds up. You're, it's not like you're gonna break it it's real flexible so you can fold it up um and store it and i mean all you have to do is take your hands and smooth it out and all the wrinkles are, you know the wrinkles where you fold, folded it are uh, gone sorry you guys i'm struggling to talk this morning so i mean you know it sort of opens it up because you don't have that weight that delay um that you have to and one of the best things about this um you'll see later on is it's very usable once you get finished so let's jump in and get it going um you will need parchment paper any kind of parchment paper it doesn't have to be the expensive stuff i use um parchment paper from the dollar tree aldi walmart i mean you know anywhere you can buy parchment paper don't go and buy you know, the $4 a box stuff, you know, drop through your dollar store and buy that dollar a box stuff because, you know, you're not going to use it for anything like that that you need anything major for. Um, so I'm going to start with my hummingbird napkin here. I love hummingbirds. Um, my mom adores hummingbirds. I have, I actually have, ooh, and it's got junk all over it. Let me wipe it clean here where I was working earlier. It is one of the Tim Holtz um, distress brushes. You do not have to have this kind of brush. Um, any kind of wide tip brush works. Uh, obviously, the wider it is, the less you have to do it, which is why I like this is because, you know, you get that one inch width. Makes it real fast and easy to do. 
then you need Mod Podge. Um, I'm actually using my DIY Mod Podge. Uh, so, you know, I will try to put a link to that video in the description box. It is super easy. And honestly, you guys, you can go buy a jar of um, Mod Podge, you know, and spend 10 bucks on the big jars or, you know, three or four bucks on the small ones. I can make a quart jar full for a little bit of nothing. And when I say a little bit of nothing, I mean like less than $1.50. All right. So all you're going to do is you've got your parchment paper and you're just literally going to Mod Podge your napkin to your parchment paper, you know, just like we do when we're adding them to our tags or whatever. Um, I do make sure I don't use a massive amount because you'll rip and tear your napkin, but you do need to make sure that you have coverage and that, you know, it's all covered. So I sort of make sure that my napkin adheres to my parchment paper. And I do have some tips and tricks that I'll be sharing along the way. Um, just to, And I don't know if someone else has done this before. I mean, I'm sure because there are no new ideas under the sun. Um, but I just was working on some stuff and was like, whoa. This works. And I wanted to share because, you know, sometimes it may just be the fact you don't think about it. You know, or, you know, it's not that, you know, you're doing the, a project and you're like, oh, that'd be a great idea. Um, now, I will tell you, I am using my DIY Mod Podge, but it is the clear. Um, this is the non-glossy. It's, it does have a sheen to it, a little bit of gloss, but it's not like overly glossy, um, which I like because, you know, that sort of gives you. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You just adhere it to the parchment paper. Now, here is where, and I've got, I'm doing several ones. You do want to make sure you don't have like any glue puddled up um, just because when it puddles up, it takes a really long time to dry. Okay, so at this point, if I was not doing a video, um, I'm going to show you a couple different alternative ways. Alternate ways, not alternative. Well, yeah, I guess alternative works too. I told you guys it is one of those days. It's a Tuesday morning, you can tell. Um, okay, at this point, if you are doing them ahead of time, yeah, pick up your parchment paper, you carry it over, set it somewhere, leave it on your desk, table, whatever, and just let it dry overnight, come back to it whenever. Um, and you can leave it on this parchment paper as long as you want. Um, I will show you, you know, the process of what we do with it after that. But I do want to show you because, you know, sometimes we need things at the last minute. And maybe you want to use it. You like the way it looks. You want to use it this way. But you don't want to let it dry overnight. Okay. I take the back, the white part of my napkin that I've pulled off, you know, because we separate our layers of our napkin out just like you're going to do on any other thing. I slide it underneath where that napkin is on it. And I use my gun. And this is a, um, a heated tool. And it doesn't take very long. I'm trying to talk over top of it. And I apologize if you... It's not super, super loud. Um, and I could mute you, but I I don't like that. I, it's, yeah, I like talking to it. Um but yeah so then we're just gonna dry you're just gonna dry it um i keep mine about four inches above four to six inches above because i don't want to blister the glue um which is where the glue will bubble up and i mean you can do that if you like that and it does add a a different texture to it um if you wanted to add texture to this when you're mod podging you could put glitter on it um there's a ton of stuff you could use, you know, you could adhere, you could actually drop sand onto it, anything that would glue, uh, if you wanted to put strings in it to create more of like a textile -y type appearance, um, you could drop strings down and maybe I'll do another one, I'll do a video like that, that'll be a different video. Um, but yeah, and it doesn't take very long to dry. Um, I put the napkin behind it because 
if you don't put the napkin behind it, it does build moisture up behind the paper um, from where it's drying. Putting the napkin underneath it just creates sort of a, a barrier between whatever surface you're drying on and your napkin so you don't, it doesn't take longer to dry because you have all that water building up in the back. And you have to just sort of test, and I mean, you can test the tack of it. You know, there's places that it's not tacky, but there's places where, that there, it is tacky around the edges where it was thicker. So I'm going to keep drying. And uh, I'll show you how I pull this one off. I have another one to do, so I will do another one um, so you guys can, I mean, it's all, if you've mod podged before, this is all pretty self-explanatory. Okay, this is pretty well dry, so it doesn't take very long. It is tacky some around the edges, like I said. So I'm going to set this to the side because I have another one I did earlier. And this just, well, I don't know if you can see right here. So you can see where that water built up underneath, even though the napkin was there. So having the napkin there just sort of keeps it from doing it. You could use a paper towel, a wash rag, um, a towel, you know, whatever you want to. And I'm, my surface is all messy. So I put that there. I'm going to pull this one I did earlier down. I am going to do another one to show you guys um, so you can see. Okay, then I sort of look around because you usually have a spot somewhere that'll that you can see. Yeah, like see here, I have one little spot that looks like it's coming up over here, so I can let me turn this around this way. Some of you guys can see better, and I just take your fingers and get up underneath of it. Do not pull hard. If you just grab it and pull it, you're gonna rip it. You have to realize. It's, you think skin, think napkins. So just, it doesn't take an extremely long amount of time to take your time even. And once you get a bigger amount off, then you can just sort of work it off. And you're just basically peeling it off like you do a second skin. Or like skin. <laughs> and that sounds so for it. I'm not sure what else to call it. And I just, you just be real care. See, I ripped right there. So you just have to be sort of careful. Um, what I usually do, it, and if you have it, sometimes you'll have it and it'll be stuck and you can't get it up. Just take a craft knife and sort of slide under the edges. And I mean, you can see where the edge of your napkin is. And just edge your napkin through there and you can go right along the edge. Um, what I usually do, and it, here's just a tip or trick. Um, put a little bit extra, like if you if you want an eight and a half by 11 square of it, then, you know, maybe go nine and a half by 12 on your napkin, if you, you know, if your napkin is that big or whatever. Um, allow yourself a little bit of room on the edge because sometimes the edges will stick and but like I said like see you can just slide your knife right along the edge slide your knife and then that gives you that little edge to start peeling from and then once you get it going you know and see that's why I always allow that little bit extra on edge because you do have that which is great because you it sort of gives you that almost like roughed up distressed edge. And if you get it in the middle and it does, it's not a big deal. Just like if you Mod Podge and you get a hole, it's not a big deal. Just take your knife, pick it. That's probably where, you know, like maybe the glue is a little too thick in one little spot. There you go. So, and you can see, and again... See how, I don't know, can you see how transparent, I mean, now, I'll show you on the next one, because I'm going to do, uh, as on, like, this is my regular napkin, and yes, I can see my hand, just slight shadowing underneath of it, and this is about the same tone in the background, um, a slight, you can see just that slight shadow, but when you put the Mod Podge on it, whatever it does, it literally makes it more like of a glassine effect to it 
um, that process that it goes through. So yeah, that leaves me, you know, a nice big sheet. So I'm going to fold it up, set it to the side. And like I go between a couple pages of parchment paper and you can go back and forth. <coughs> um, but if you have a couple, you can go back and forth between them. So you're reusing the same ones. So you're not using like a big, it's not like you have to use a new piece of parchment for every single napkin that you do, if that makes sense. So, and like I said, once you get into doing it, you can, you know, the first time you do it, it takes you a little more time because you're real cautious. But um, after you've done it a couple times, or if you're used to Mod Podging napkins on all the time, this is old school for you. So, the amazing things you can do with a napkin. But so I just, and like I said, tomorrow I will um, come back because we're gonna make some things. Um, try not to. Sorry about getting on the camera there, but sort of trying to reach that corner over there, and I have these little bitty dinky short arms. I'm five foot four, so I'm teeny tiny short anyway. Um, compared to around here, my one son's almost six foot, so <laughs> well, my brothers, my brother, and my nephews and stuff are. Yeah, six foot two, six foot three. They're huge people compared to me. Okay, so that and again, I didn't put my napkin underneath of it. And you don't have to put your napkin, but like I said, it does take <clears throat> a lot longer. I want to just sort of show you this one so you can see how transparent it was. You can peel them as soon as you get done. I was sick of my hummingbird back. Here. Yeah, my hummingbird one's dry from earlier. It's completely dry. Um, and, you know, what I usually do is if I dry them like this, because um, I like to, you know, keep them ready. So when I get done drying this one, I'll put it to the side while I'm peeling the other one. And by the time I get the other one peeled, it's ready to go. So it's pretty much, if you have two pieces of parchment, you can, you know, glue it down dry it set it to the side which lets it cool down it's not so much that it lets it dry um but this is a heated tool so it does apply heat um so setting it to the side lets it cool down which lets it peel a little bit easier um so you know i'll you dry this i'll set it to the side um to let it cool down while i peel the other one by the time i have the other one peeled and when i peel one and glue it like this and dry it the other one's ready to peel so you know if you want to take an hour or two i mean you could literally have a whole well i tend to put things in tote i have little totes with lids um you know you can literally have a tote full ready to go and if you want to um I was looking for something specific to show you with. Oh, yeah, I got my little piece I used earlier. I'll show you with that. Um, if you want to fussy cut a napkin, which, you know, is sort of harder to do, you know, you can run it through this process, and there, it's super simple to fussy cut after that point um, because you actually have some bite, some tooth to your... Okay, so I'm going to set this to the side. Let me... And I, Like I said, this is the back of the napkins. Um... I will show you how I pull a napkin, um, but that's pretty simple. Let me throw this up here, and let me grab an, un, an unsealed napkin. I was trying to find one specifically. Because I have found, I know everybody uses, everybody does different things. Um, yeah, so, yeah. No, completely dry, I think. There's one little sticky spot there, but I think we're good to go. So, again, like this one, um, 
I'm looking around trying to find, yep, see there's a peeled up edge. You usually can find an edge and it makes it a little easier. Like I said earlier. And again, you can take your knife and go along the edge if you want or just very carefully peel it with your fingers. This is what I usually end up doing until it sticks. And it sort of helps. I'm pulling the napkin and the parchment paper. So all it's not all that stress just on the napkin. And usually where you're going to, if you're going to get any like boo-boos or goobed up parts or whatever, it's going to be along the edge because that thicker glue tends to pull up along the edge. This is a, uh, was a Michael, was it Michael Design? napkin so it tends to be just a little bit more I guess fragile maybe than others don't see there was a little spot that was wet right there so if you're pulling and you notice a wet spot, just grab your gun and that's probably where maybe um, some glue pulled up underneath, you know, that it just happens. So just sort of lift your paper up so it doesn't go down on your table and wet everything where you've dried it underneath with the moisture. Hit it with a little heat. You're good to go. See, I'm pulling up down here in the corner. Which is why I always, you know, sort of build around what that seems to be sticky on that section. And like I said, you know, you are working with glue, so you're going to have times it's going to get a little, you'll be like, what? It didn't work right. What's the world? I did this 50 times already and it worked and now it's not going to work, you know, that type of thing. There we go. And it peels right off. So like, you know, that gives me, and I have a full sheet. It's ready to go. So let me put this to the side. This over here, I do want to show you. A lot of people I know use tape. Um, tape works. I don't have a problem with tape. Um, other than the fact I don't like really wasting the tape. So what I did is I have a lot of these like inker, re-inker, you know, the ink pad tools. Um, I think these are Ranger or Tim Holtz, the little circular ones and I found that and I can take and clean this out so it's not a big deal but I keep one specifically for my napkins because it has that little sticky you know the velcro sticky part I can just take it in just a little bit just you don't have to do it real hard just sort of ruffle it up and it pulls up just like the tape but it's something I can reuse and I'm not wasting tape continuously or washi or whatever because I mean I know some people use washi some people use scotch tape packaging tape whatever and that just saves me that tape and then again I'll take that back just take it and fold it up and I'll have it to put underneath when I dry now let me see is there another layer yep there's another layer here it feels like it anyway yep and then just pull your second layer not a problem and it just sort of that little velcro you know because it's not the soft part of the velcro it's the sticky hard part on the back of there and it just catches the napkin i think it actually works a little bit better um for me it works better than the tape because the tape i end up having to you know whatever so yeah 
So then I've pulled it. So this is ready to go. So I could just, you know, put this on my parchment paper, glue it down, and it's ready to go. So I'm going to set this aside because I do want to pull this. It's the hardest part is the whole pulling it off. Like, see this one? I don't, there's not an edge that's pulled up yet. So, yeah, I'm going to have to have my knife. So I just take my knife and sort of slide it. And I'm not poking down or anything. I'm just sliding it flat. And you can just sort of take it like right there. Because all you have to have is that little piece to grab a hold of. And I'm not really cutting anything. I'm literally just sliding it because of the glue and the parchment paper. It just slides off a little pretty easy. And then once you get it, you can, like I said, just, just unpeel. And I find with me, it's easier to peel around the edge first. It seems like it goes better once you peel, like the width wise or Uh, you just very simply pull. Now, I will show you a freebie that you can get out of this. Now, I um, I do my Mod Podge and oh, this is about where it dried a lot right there. Well, I mean, it's all dry, but Sometimes it seems like it, in certain spots, it seems like it'll actually adhere to the parchment paper, which is crazy because nothing's supposed to stick to parchment paper. I know I have not tried doing this with wax paper. Um, it may work perfectly fine with wax paper. I don't know. There we go. And usually once you get it going, it goes. You just have to watch it because, you know, if it you catches that little end, it'll rip. And if you're not paying attention, you'll rip a big, huge section instead of just that little bitty hole, which, you know, I can work around that. There we go. So if you guys remember a while ago, you know, where you now see the difference in how you can see my hand through there now. Big difference. So whatever the process is that it goes through when it does that. So yeah, so now I have this really cool, you know, skin that I can use. So I'm going to fold this up and we will be using those for the next two days. Now, I'm going to pull my parchment out again. And I'm only going to do a little section to show you because now when I make my DIY Mod Podge. I actually have one that I use. Um, let me get my lid back on my Mod Podge here. And I just store all my Mod Podge in canning jars. Um, so they do dry around the edges and stuff sometimes. So it's like, okay. So when I made my Mod Podge, I also have a video for um, colored Mod Podge, which you can do in any color. Um, and it's basically the Mod Podge. And I'll look, I have a link to a video for it too. Um, it's pretty much your standard Mod Podge, but you use um, different like color re-inking. Um, yeah, the re-inking solution to put in it, like you use when you re-ink your ink pads. Um, so you can literally make it in any like color, and I, but not just like the distress ink, but like stamping up ink, any kind of ink pad refiller that you have works. So you can make pink and you can make blue and 
whatever color you want. Um, and I'll show you because like this is the vintage photo color that I have. So let me put this to the side. Whoops. Just wipe around the edge of my lid or I'll never be able to get it undone. Put my lid on. I know you guys are probably like, really? She's going to use a whole video just showing us how to paint muscle. Um, but yeah, so this is the vintage photo. So let me dry it real fast and I'll try to pull it while it's still warm just so I don't take up a lot of your time. Um, but yeah, you can do it in any color. So if you have a, if you, okay, say so you do a lot of shabby chic, um, you know, then do, you know, do you up a jar of pink and you can make it with pink. And these are just the backs of your napkins, which, you know, we end up collecting and collecting and gather and collect and gather and collect. And you end up with a ton of them and you use them to wipe stuff up or whatever. Cause I mean, they're napkin backs. So what are you going to? You, sometimes you get them um, if they're floral and they'll have that haze of flowers in them, um, which is really cool just to use the white with, which is because it sort of creates that like watercolor -y effect in the background. This is drying pretty fast. And it does dry pretty fast, um, a lot faster than Mod Podge. And the DIY stuff that I made does. And it doesn't it's not as tacky that's one thing i i love mod podge i love the effects of mod podge but i never liked the tackiness of it and i'm sorry if i seem like i'm ranting today but and over time as you use this you will get like wrinkles in your thing so you just sort of base that on you know when it gets too wrinkly that you don't want to use it anymore then pitch it and you know grab a new piece or you know if you buy it at the Dollar Tree, you know, at a dollar roll, I mean, you technically can pitch it every time. I don't, but. I like to let these cool some because I think they. I think they peel easier, but. I chip the blade of my knife, apparently, because. I just now noticed there's a chip in it. And if you don't let it dry, which I'm hoping this doesn't do. If you don't let it dry, yeah, see, it's still a little wet. I mean, grab my dryer and try to dry it a little more. I mean, there's sections of it that are not as dry. <laughs> Um, but then when you pull this, this is going to create like a vintage photo glassine effect almost. Um, but it's not the same as like, um, we did our envelopes the other day. Um, Okay, I'm just going to pull this because normally I would let this dry a lot longer so it wouldn't have had time to really do its thing. So that's why it's pulling up, which I don't care because I use these little tidbits because they're almost like um, like sewing pattern, pattern material. See, that, see how that come up like that? I'm just not letting it dry long enough. letting it cool down after you dry it because when it's warm it wants to rip a lot more easily versus see there you can tell where it's starting to cool down on that side okay well so it pulls off and it almost creates like this um like faux glassine but it looks really good if say you have 
Well, let's see. If you have a piece of it, I have a little glue left in my brush, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. Um, you have a little piece of it, and you can just... I wouldn't normally use my Mod Podge. I have it here. But you can use our glitter glue, um, glue stick, um, you know, anything like that. Because it already has that glue on there, if you use the glue side, it attaches really, really well. Um, this, I also find... Um, and I mean, this is sort of up to the individual, but let me, I like cutting this in strips. And again, you can use your art glitter glue. I was looking for my art glitter glue, cause, but I was working in the other room, so I've got it in there right now. Um, so I'll just put a little bit on here so I won't. And you can adhere it. There's your faux, you know, that old vintage tape we pull off of everything. So there's just the first idea. And that's a freebie. That's a freebie. Um, but yeah, so, you know, put a little photo underneath there and put, you know, that across the corner and the other. It's going to look just like you taped it into a book. And it's throwaway. I mean, the backs and napkins we throw away every day. So there is your freebie for today. Um, you know, this almost looks like old vintage shipping tape. Um, and again, you can do the masking tape. Uh, you can cut it wider. You know, this piece I've just about used up. And again, you know, if you do your whole napkin, it's going to be a little messy. I'll show you now that it's cooled down some. Let's see how it's. And it may be where my page, I've used this page like quite a lot. So it may be having issues drying and sticking because of that. Let's see, so it's still going to. Oh, see, this one's just not working right. Maybe it's that style of napkin. That's really weird because the napkin part worked fine. Okay, well, anyway. It might just be where I've used that page so many times because it does get really sticky. If and like this, I'm using, you know, this has the vintage photo glue on it so it's sort of adding a little bit to the back but and you know you can go over top or on back and see that's going to create that like torn tape look or even like a vintage sewing pattern um especially if let me see if you grab like a wide ball let me see if it'll let me do it it does better with the permanent markers but yeah, you can even do like a faux vintage sewing pattern if you wanted to. You know, like you can make your own sewing pattern look without having a sewing pattern. So, I mean, there's a ton of things you can do with it. But there's a little hint for today. And then tomorrow we'll be back with the video where we will be doing um, a couple things. We'll be doing some um, journaling cards and just... Um, couple other things so i will see you back here tomorrow um with our napkin skins so i mean you know that was 40 minutes of me explaining we did our masking tape one um we did three full ones um 
plus all the explaining and drawing and all that. So yeah, it doesn't take that long. You can fly through it. And, you know, if you know you're going to have a certain journal, you know, you're doing a floral journal, then, you know, you can run through and do it. And it almost looks like a vintage wrapping paper. Um, it's really cool. So we will be back tomorrow um, or Thursday um, with some videos. It's going to depend. I'm going to tape it and it'll depend on how long it takes to how many videos it is. Um, and we will be back. I hope you enjoyed the video for today. Um, have a great day. I hope everybody's getting ready for um, Thanksgiving. Um, if you're in the U.S., uh, you guys have a great day and we will see you later. Again, this is Dorothy with Done by Dorothy. Um, you know, thanks. Give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Um, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.